You mentioned the fact that you were appointed to fill the unexpired term of your husband and that morally and ethically you may see alike on plenty of issues, but you may not always vote alike. Give me an example or two of where you think you may differ with Cecil. Well, we definitely differed on the streetcar. He supported the streetcar. I opposed the streetcar. And I opposed the streetcar for a lot of reasons. Um, the numbers just did not add up. The governor had sent the $52 million back to the federal government. We had shortened the route so the streetcar wouldn't sustain itself. And I did not feel the taxpayers needed to bear the burden of a, a streetcar with escalating costs continually. So that is one perfect example of where I opposed. I'm also, I don't like the, the parking plan. I don't like how, it, how the, com the community was not engaged. They were not communicated enough to. They did not have the buy-in to the process. So those are two important issues that, I th that we differ on. We highly differ on. I respect his decision, but I have to vote with the information that I have in front of me at that time and what's in the best interest of the constituency. Okay, Carolyn, your question for Ms. Thomas. The city budget doesn't have unlimited money to have a police officer on every corner in every neighborhood. Are there things that citizens can do to be partners uh, with the police department to help safety in their own neighborhoods? Absolutely. We have the block watch groups and we have citizens on patrol. All of you want to participate in citizens on patrol. That's a great organization that helps the police. You can partner with the police officers. But I always say that the neighborhood citizens living right there in the neighborhood are the best watchdogs for the police. They see who comes in and out. They know when things are different and not right in the neighborhood. So I would highly suggest that as a, the community, you just get involved in like the citizen on patrol or get a watch block, block club together. Okay, Herman, your question. You mentioned that education metrics are some of the best ways to measure the city. Um, what specifically would you do to make sure children are succeeding in education? Well, first of all, I'm, I want to say that I'm a 21-year retiree from education. I started out as a substitute teacher, was promoted to an administrator after one year, developed the first customer help center for Cincinnati Public Schools, and became the first ombudsman. And a lot of it is helping the parents navigate through the red tape. Another issue we have is schools, there's disparity in neighborhood schools as opposed to magnet schools. So we need more parent involvement, more parents stepping up to the plate to make sure that disparity is broken. Um, additionally, we want to graduate kids that really deserve graduating not passing because we want to get them out of our classroom. We need to make sure that they're equipped to be able to come out into the working world and become good citizens who can make a wage in this society. Human services has been underfunded for nearly a decade. Why has this happened? And do you see these services being fully funded during the coming four years? Ms. Thomas. Well, the first thing I can say about the cut on human <laughs> services is not on my watch. Um, unfortunately, human services is very important, and we can connect it to poverty in Cincinnati. I mean, I'm a no-nonsense candidate, and it is nonsense to cut human services and then question why the poverty rate continues to rise. They are highly connected, and as long as I'm on council, I'm going to push to support human services. And as my uh, colleagues mentioned, that there was funding put back into those sources to help Cincinnati get back on its feet. But those are services that are very vital to the citizens here, and they reduce poverty, they cut down on the crime, because when our human, human services are not filled, we, our crime rate increases. So I just want to say that I will be a supporter of human services. I'm Pam Thomas, and the budget is a real issue here in Cincinnati, and I have a master's in business administration, graduated summa cum laude. I'm not opposed to doing a SWOT analysis on this city, the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats that we have to look forward to. You know, I promise to improve the quality of life for everybody, not just in this room, but for your children, your family, your neighbors. And if you believe in that promise, you'll vote your, you'll cast your vote for Thomas. Thank you. Mm -hmm.